Welcome to episode 6 of Strategic Rap Intelligence. I am your host, Robert Lee Taylor. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to investigate a matter back on the West Coast in Seattle, Washington. And today, we are going to refrain from discussing any presidential affairs or anything having to do with the current president, Barack Obama. And the reason we're going to do that is that someone such as myself, who is an objective thinker, has to remind people that despite my political orientation, my political beliefs, and what have you, I have friends who think differently. They, they think differently than I and uh, I respect that. In that uh, light and in that same vein, I want to talk about someone who has been a friend of mine for a significant and considerable amount of time and who also has a radio show. So in addition to the aforementioned, this is someone who I had worked with for quite some time, for a considerable amount of time. I network with this person on a daily basis in the Pacific Northwest in Seattle, whereby we had a message that was being broadcast over the airwaves on a weekly basis, sometimes daily basis, for a number of years. We politicked together, we discussed business ventures, we discussed business activities, how to expand both our businesses working together. So today, what I share with you is a letter that I wrote to Gordon Curvey of Music Inner City, MIC. Dear Gordon, I have thought long and hard about the time that I interned with your show back during my first couple of years of college. The experiences I had helping to network local artists advertising on behalf of Music Inner City, seeking donations on your behalf, on behalf of the show, politicking on behalf of the show, raising awareness about new features of the show, and getting artists to spend money with you. For several years, you and I really pumped the message out there and I clearly recall each and every one of the conversations that you and I had on an almost daily basis for nearly 24 straight months. Gordon, I remember every single person who ever hated on you in the history of Seattle, Washington. I remember when your so-called friends straight fucked you over when it came to what was supposed to be your birthday party one year and how they waited until long after the fact, in other words, until long after your birthday, to combine your birthday party or what was supposed to have been your birthday party, into a half-assed MIC anniversary celebration. They even charged the artists to perform at your event, which was the stupidest fucking thing in the world and a total turnoff to the casual observer. Furthermore, I remember how thousands of times over, KKKUBE snubbed its nose at you, laughed in your face, and deceived you time and time again, especially Tony B having deceived you and Gene D. In other words, Gene Dexter, having deceived you. On the other hand, I supported you 100%, having watched your show since I was a youth. Now at age 34, I look back and realize even more how these things have transpired. The backstabbing, so-called artists, and fake-ass wannabe record labels in the Northwest. Fake-ass wannabe record labels in the Pacific Northwest. Music Inner City is one of the only truly respectful entities that has ever properly represented hip-hop culture in Seattle. Yet so-called Northwest record labels, which are really just criminal enterprises and fake gangster and wannabe thugs, have been almost wholly unsupportive of what you have worked so hard to accomplish. 99% of the other outfits in Seattle are nothing but drug dealing, money laundering, KKK genocide supported, white supremacist genocide supported, black on black crime, self-hating, fake record labels with absolutely zero respect for true hip hop slash rap culture, entertainment, community building, and legitimate small business expansion within our African American community and larger communities. All they want to do is talk shit behind your back every chance they get. Despite a couple of times that you and I disagreed on certain minor issues and relatively insignificant matters, in the larger scope of things, I'm willing to put the past behind us and help again to spread the message. Now that I have lived in the nation's capital, on the East Coast, Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia, New York, for over a half decade, and have subsequently lived overseas in Europe and Asia, 
People need to know the absolutely true story of Music Inner City, MIC, from someone who was there by your side for several years working to set the record straight. Sincerely, Robert Lee Taylor.